Hi. Welcome back all of you. Nana here and then uh, we are into the next day's program of this uh, fusion uh, procurement implementation. So we are now completed all the basics of uh, the procurement. Now we are going to the advanced level. Right? Now we are going to the purchase orders actually. We are now completed even the supplier creation. Now we are into supplier creation uh, on the on the contract purchase agreement on the purchase orders. Now, right? So we will now begin with the CPH. So let us go there and then let me share it. So my voice is clear, isn't it? Can you say yes to me? Yes, sir. Okay, very good, very good. It's okay, I will now share the screen. Now we are going to go for a contract purchase agreement now. I go to the procurement and then here I will now begin a contract purchase agreement now. So go there. So go to the procurement and then here I go to the purchase orders straight away. Frankly, before purchase orders, we need to have a supplier also. So we had to create a supplier for this now because that, that instance is gone. And so we are now in the new new one. So before we begin the purchase orders, what happens? You go there. I will now go to the setup and maintenance. And then I will now bypass the approvals for supplier creation actually. So go to actions and then you go to go to offerings now fine i'm going to bypass the approvals for supplier creation actually i go to the procurement now fine go to the procurement you go to the procurement and then go to the opt-in features so procurement and opt-in features and we are going to bypass the approvals actually <clears throat> so no approval is required actually so click on the opt-in features and then again the suppliers you click on the futures actually in the opt-in features against the entry for suppliers you click on the futures so that is where we are going to do <clears throat> And remember, whenever you are going in for opt-in features, you enable everything in a real field. Actually, so that uh, we can uh, very well work on each and every features which are there in this now. Whether you are using it or not, again, it is always uh, preferable to enable each and everything. Now. Fine. We are now into the opt-in features now. So we are waiting for the screen to come up now. So that. now, again, again, the procurement, we have a supplier. In the supplier, what happens? We have one futures now. Fine. Click on the futures of the supplier. So click on the futures of the supplier. So again, this procurement suppliers fine. Click on the features of the supplier. Now we'll now go inside and then we'll now bypass all the approvals. Fine. So approve internal change on the supplier profile. This is the one now. Fine. Click on it and then click on enable. Now fine. Click on it. Click on edit now. So click on edit now. Fine. Click on edit. Edit account is there. Fine. So here they enabled everything. So I will now disable addresses, disable bank accounts, and then disable organization details. So now all the approvals are bypassed. <clears throat> We can create an approval for sites, addresses, bank accounts, and organization details. Now, fine. So, pass up now. What happens is nothing is enabled. So, all approvals are bypassed. Clear on this now, fine. Click on save and close. And you know, bypass all the approvals. So, go there. so, click on done. And so, what happens? Now, supplier creation is now without approval. So, we come over here now, fine. Click on it. And then, whenever you make such a major change, you have a habit of what? Logging out and logging in for the system to sense the change, actually. For the system to sense the change, what happens? You preferably log out and log in. Because we are not done the offerings. In the offerings area, whenever you are making a change, have a habit of what? Logging out and logging in for the system to sense it now. <clears throat> You're going to log in. And then preferably run the LDAP also. LDAP will now sync all the setups, whatever you made into the transactional system. So fine, that also you make it now fine. And then do it. <clears throat> so have it, make it the habit. Because in reality, what happens? The LDAP is not required because it will be running automatically. Every three hours or every four hours internally. But we need immediate results. And so what happens if we are now forcibly running it? We are force syncing all the setups. Now, if I click on the home icon, so click on the home icon, and then you go to the tools. Now, if I go to the tools, you go to the tools. Uh, we go to the tools and then go to the security console. You go to the uh, uh, scheduled process. Fine, click on the scheduled process. Now, we are force syncing the setups actually. I click on schedule because we need results immediately now. In reality, you won't be what happens rushing like this now. When you set up in the client's instance, what happens? You will now perform a transaction only after six or seven hours, actually. So no need to force sync at all. Fine, click on OK now. This will now force sync all the setups into the transaction system section. So some major setups, not even minor, no? fine. Some major setups will be getting force sync actually. And then now you see it is now blocked. That means what? Somebody is already running it actually, because of which is no block. So this is a worldwide instance, and so somebody will be running it. And then after some time, what happens? It will now automatically wake up and then it will be running. Fine, of course. So go that point. And then we'll now leave it as a champ and click on it. And then this is a better practice. I don't say that this is a must actually. And it's a better practice. So over the load and load. Fine, click on sign out and sign in. Now we have bypassed the approvals for supplier actually. We'll go there. We'll now go and then create our supplier. So I now go there, click on it. So let us now go there and then create our supplier actually. Hmm. You know, go to create a supplier. We'll now go there. You go to the procurement and then I go to the supplier. So I will now create a P01 sub one. I'm going to create now. <clears throat> and click on it. I will now go there, click on it, click on create supplier. So click on create supplier. You're not creating it. 
sometimes even logging out and logging in is also sufficient but uh, ldap also will not definitely ensure you that your setups are now what happens since to be the transactional systems n p01 underscore sub underscore one so go down i will not make it the spend authorize we have already seen about how to convert a prospective to spend authorize in the previous training now i will the spend operation and go that on it i will not make it the corporation fine click on the create you are not creating a new supplier now. <laughs> so we are now creating a new supplier so go that click on it and then we are going to create fine go that so here what happens everything is coming fine go that on and then here you go to the payments area and then in this place what happens you enable the check payment now. my check payment is automated actually so once when i push it from the purchasing to payables this will now make you to make a payment also automatically because this is not fully set actually make it make a check payment enabled always have it habit because other payment methods you need the help of financials actually otherwise for this no need to have any financials help because it is an automatic actually is in the vision is automatic so make a check payment and click on save now thank you for saying it's now saved and then go there you go to the address now click on the address you go to the address and then i'm going to get the address click on it i'm not going to get it so click on plus now i'm going to get the address so click on plus and then let us now create an address actually yeah. Yeah. So we are now going to create an address now, fine. So go there. I will now say it's what? P01. Fine. Address 1. And go there. Country is United States. So put the country as United States. It works very well now, fine. Do not put any other country because this vision instance works very well with the United States now, fine. So in the field, what happens? It will be a different country. But for training purposes, this is the best one. And then put the country. For postal code is 100. I will now choose the new R. Now, fine. Click on it. And then I will now populate the address 1. Fine. P01. Fine. Address line 1. That is sufficient, right? And then enable ordering element. This is for the purchase order. This is for the payables actually. Enable these two, and then click on save. So the address is now created. In reality, everything will be real values. Only for training purposes, we are doing like this. Now I click on save and close. Now this is now created. Now we go to the contacts. There is no need to submit at all because there is no submit button also coming because all the approvals are bypassed actually. You go to the contacts directly. You go to the contacts. We can very well create a contact now. Click on plus now. And then the address will be visible now. Fine, but there is no approval on the address. There is no approval on the bank. And then there is no address on the sites. Nothing is nothing on approval there. Fine, be coming. Fine. I will not say, I will not put my name. Fine. Ananta one, Nana one. Well, it's fine. Right? And then I can give an email also. Fine. I will not say A one, some name, some junk name. Fine. A one dot N one. Fine. At the rate uh, gmail dot com. Click on it. I am not going to get fine. So click on it. And then go to actions and then go to self net. So here, what happens? You will be finding this address coming. So if it is any approval is enabled, this will not come at all. Only after approval, the address will be coming. Otherwise, since it is bypassed on the contact, we can very well choose this. Now I click on apply and click on OK. And by which it happens, it's not completed. <laughs> and then click on save and close. Now by which the contact is not created. Now we are going to go and then create our site. Now. For the site, what happens? This guy must be a procurement agent. Otherwise, what happens? We are not create a site. Now, if you go to the site, what happens? You don't find you don't find the plus symbol at all. So I will not right click and then I will not make him as a procurement agent. Fine, duplicate it. So I am not going to make him as a procurement agent. So procurement agent are only authorized to create a site actually. And remember, when financials are working, they won't create the users from the managed users. They will not be creating the users from security console. But for site creation, they have to come to come and they will not take the help of the what happens your uh, supply chain team actually. No, go that, on it. Because supply chain team only can what happens make up employee as a procurement agent because he must be a legal user. If a user is now linked to a LENBU. Then only he can do it. Otherwise, what happens? The security console users cannot be done. No, fine. Managed person, procurement person, agent. So your what's called your uh, uh, users which are created via security console cannot be made as a procurement agent. Only users who are created via what's called your uh, uh, managed users they can only be made. No, fine. Click on plus. No, fine. So PRC twenty one. PRC twenty one is a fully enabled one. No, fine. I'm not working on the PRC one. PRC twenty one. Fine. Is that one? US one. So I'm now working on the years one now. I click on it. Years one, and then the agent is what student. Fine, comma PRC twenty one. So go there. I will not choose it. Fine. The last name, comma first name. I'm doing it. Fine. Drop it down, and then choose the years one business unit. Fine. Go there, and then I will now enable him. I will now give him full access to other agents' documents. Normally, what happens in a company, you won't find too many purchase officers available. So every uh, person can access the other agents' document fully. Now, I give him full access now. Not full access. Go there. Full access. We are giving it now. So by which order not done. So click on save and close. Now we can very well create a site actually. So in this place, what happens? We go there. So the plus symbol is not coming. So we'll now give a save and close and then requery the supplier. Then what happens? The plus symbol is going because we already done it. Now. Right? Click on save and close. So click on okay. Now. Fine. Click on that. Fine. Go there. I will not go to the managed supplies and then query now. Go to the managed supplies. I will not query the supplier. Now I click on it. I will not say P01 is the supplier. And then make a search now. Fine. Click on search, it will be coming. So we have only one supplier. Fine. Select it. And then click on the hyperlink of the supplier. And now go to the sites directly. Right? Go to the sites. So go to the sites and then see the plus symbol one the chi. If it is not coming, it will be in the edit mode now. Fine. Bring it to edit mode, it will be coming now. Fine. 
ஒன் <laughs> <laughs> In reality, it has, you have to be put up properly. And then go to the site assignments. You go to the site assignments and then click on whatever the auto-create site assignments will be getting so many assignments actually. Fine. I don't want this. No, I click on it. I will not. What about the speed? And I will not delete it. I don't want it. UK, I don't want it. No, fine. Come on, select them. Delete it. US1 is the one. Fine. I will not delete it also. So US1. So since it is a vision, nobody, so many is doing. I will not use the Seattle. No, fine. Seattle is a location where it is going to be the what happens here? 001's org location of Angola is the Seattle. Seattle. So if you go on and look at it, we are working on the visions instance now actually. Fine, go there. So I will now go to this place. No, sorry. I will now go to the one. I will now open up my CSCM training and then open up the fourth document and then I will now open the third one. On the addition logs records four, I am opening up the three vision enterprise structure and double click on it. We are opening it up. So we are working on the visions enterprise and so what happens? The ledger is this. The COA is this. The legal entity is this. The business entity is this. So this is the structure on which you're working. And then we have a 001 org, which is having a Seattle location actually. The location is also Seattle. The org name is also Seattle. They're using it. So that will not make it as a default OER of finance borders. The remaining things will be used by the payable structure. Payables will be setting the liability distribution. These accounts, they will be setting it up. Fine. So as of now, we are not going to push it in the payables. Now, fine. So click on save and close. By which, what happened? The site gets created fully now. <clears throat> so click on save and close. So the site creation is now complete. <clears throat> So click on it. By which the supplier creation is now complete. Fine, click on seven close. We have now completed the supplier creation. Okay. Now, now go there and then create an item for our account. Fine, click on it. We'll now go there. Click on the home icon on the top. We will now create one item for this. Now click on it. Now go to the place. Fine, click on it. I will now go to the what? I will now go to the product management. I will now go to the product information management. And then let me create one item for this exercise. So it is called PR CPA SPO. Fine, that is what we are going to do. Fine, click on it. So click on it. I will now go there. Go to the create item. And then we are now going to create item. So we are now going to create the master org. So the master org is 000, and then we are going to assign it to the child org. Go there. Is the 000 is the master org. And then go there. Fine, Chalika. Somebody's item class is coming, it doesn't matter. And then it's okay, fine. We doesn't matter. Okay? We already seen everything on the product data. It doesn't matter. Fine, whatever it is, fine, click on okay. Only thing is what? It must have an approved one. Fine, click on okay. The status has to come as approved. That is the only thing, right? Now, as long as it's coming as approved, any item class is okay. Fine. Pure inventory is not bothered about the item class. Right? Item class is bothered only with the what happens your <coughs> product life cycle management as well as the product data hub. They are very much what happens interested in those things. Right? Otherwise, what happens the item class has got no real relevance as far as pure inventory is concerned. Right? So please 01, 01. Right? I will not say what happens the first item. So we are now in the process of creating a first item. It must be approved now. Fine. Otherwise, you choose some other item class because so many people are working on it. Now, fine. So some other item go there, click on it. And then you go to the specifications and I will now give a list price. I will now go there. I will now go to the purchasing. Let me give a list price of 10 now. <clears throat> so that will be getting the purchase price is 12, 10. Fine, 10. So I'm giving it. And go to the associations and let me associate my child arm. Go, go to actions and then go to select that. And then I'm going to associate my child arc 001. 001, I'm going to choose it. Now I click on it. I will now select it and then click on apply and then click on done. By which, what happens? It's not done. <coughs> it's not done. So it's not done. So give a save and close. <coughs> Drop it down and then give a save and close. Now. P0101 is not ready. So we have completed the creation of item in number 000 org and then assigned it to the 001 child also. <coughs> now what happens? You go there. I will not click on the, I will not create a CP, you know, I will not, I'm not going to create a CP. Go, so, go to the procurement and then I go to the purchase orders. We are now going to create a contract purchase agreement. Fine, click on the purchase. So what is a contract purchase agreement? First of all, let me see. So whenever I am not going to order, let us say, I have a, what I mean, a computer supplier. He gives me laptop, he uses me desktop, and then he is going to give routers, monitors, keyboards, mouse, etc. Some hundreds of items he is supplying to me. So for such a supplier, he may supply so many items. I am not going to enter into a contract actually. I am not going to enter into a contract. So the first activity is to what? Create a contract purchase agreement. Click on the create order. I will not go to the order and then create an order. We are not going to create a contract purchase agreement. We are not going to create a contract purchase agreement. So drop down and then choose what? Corporate contract purchase agreement. Right? The configure fine for the con 
I will not use what a contract purchase agreement. Click on it. Uh, and then what everything is, I'm going to click on search now. Search and then go there. I will not say contract con and then click on search now. Fine, I'll be adding one contract purchase agreement, configure order purchase order, consignment order. Everything is there. Fine, we don't have any contract. Fine, somebody might have but I was not done it at all. I know that not. I will not go there. Drop it on again. Complex PO, configured order purchase order, consignment order, deliverable services order. Fine, outside closing order. Fine, PO with the credit purchase orders. Everything is there. Fine, click on search and then make a what happens. Go to the advanced and then make a. Search, you know, fine, click on it. In the good, the advanced fine go there. I will not say is not blank. I will not make everything as a is not blank. I'm going to click on it. I will not make it is not blank. I'm going to click on it. And then click on search, you know, fine, click on search. You now see, there will be so many things. So some of them is not enabled actually. So what I do is I will not go to the standard style and then enable it. Now I click on it. Somebody has not enabled it. I'm going go there. So click on it. I'm not go to the plan. I will not click on it. I will not go to the manage document styles and then enable the CP actually. Fine. Manage percentage line, doc percentage line, the CY <coughs> style. I will not go to the document style and then enable the CP actually. And go to the manage document styles. You'll be having one standard style actually. This is a standard style. So in this case, what happens? You go there and then click on edit. Oh, I did it. Now go there. So click on edit. So everything is there. Fine. Go account. And then here, what happens? You'll not see blanket contract purchase agreement is enabled. Is yes, not. You know, contract purchase agreement is enabled actually. So a standard style has got even the contract purchase agreement enabled actually. So the name is what contract purchase agreement. I think the standard style is there, but what happens? It has to be active. It is also active actually. And concerned that all that number. So the change number. So the So standard style is normally used for doing this. Now I click on it. Standard style is there actually. So okay, fine. This is not coming. Fine. Some but somebody has customized it. Let me create my own style and then enable the CPA. I don't know the CPA. So let me. So somebody might have customized something. Fine. It's all the same. Click on plus no fine. Let me create my own style. I will not say the style name is what P01 style. You will not create a style of click on it. So take the operate because somebody is now customizing it. Click on it over there. I will not say purchasing basis, what quantity and amount for that is all okay. Fine. No, no. Line type is all fine. Yeah. Credit lines. Fine. I'm not enabling it. Fine. Go there. And then the retain age and recuperation will not have come to it a bit later, actually. Not now. Fine. Purchase orders. Fine. I will not say P01. Fine. PO. So this is a P P01 purchase order. Fine, go there. The blanket purchase agreement is what the display name is what P01 fine BPA. BPA. And then here, what happens? I will not go there. The complex is what I'll not say is a P01 CPA. So we are now creating one document type as is not fine. So it will be displayed like this. Is enabled is not enabled. Fine, go there. Suppose I click on it. And then what happens? Give a save and close. It is not done. So my P01 CPA will be coming because it's not enabled for contract purchase agreement. Fine, click on it. My style is enabled for it. Fine, go there. I will not go to the place. Fine, go there. I will not go and then create an order. Fine, click on the order. <coughs> and go there. Click on it. You know, drop down. Your P01s will be coming over there. Because the standard style, somebody has uh, made some uh, mingling. Fine, go there. Click on it. You know, say P01 purchase orders coming. Fine, go there. Click on search. No, fine. Uh, purchase orders coming. The CPA is not coming at all. Fine, so I will not say P01. So P01 and then make a search and no, fine click on search. We are only getting the purchase order. The BPA and CPA are not coming. That means what agreements are not enabled actually. We will not go there. We will not see the function. There is a problem in the other one. No, fine, click on cancel. So we will not go on and see what go there. Click on the no, I will not go to what uh, assign busy busy. No, fine, click on the no. I will not go there. I will not go to what go to the financials and click on the financials. And the financials, what happens? They go there. And then here, I will not go to what. Assign percentage fine, busy percentage fine, busy percentage. We go to the assign busy busy fine. So I will not select that. What happens? You will just take no fine, drop it on, and then select that. Fine, click on apply and will task. And then here, I will say what happens. You uh, is called US one now. Fine, US one is that. What happens? US one. And click on it. Now go US one business unit. Fine, select it and then click on save and close. And then I will say anything is disabled here now. Nothing is enabled actually. Each and everything is enabled, but the agreements are not coming actually. So the agreement functionality is not coming. Fine, that. So for agreement, that was a, something is missing actually. Mm -hmm. Agreement will not go on. Then what happens? Have a look at that. Configure procurement business function. Thank you, Mark. Good. I'm not searching. Will not go to the word. Configure mm -hmm. procurement fine. business function. Because many people are fiddling around on so many setups now. Click on it. Will not go to the configure procurement business function and drop it down. I will not say is a US one now. Fine. US one is the one. US one business unit. I will click on it. So click on OK now. Click on it. 
Now, see if there any set of so the agreement is there or not. Then this also you always make it as a zero so that what happens it will be attached as a what as a as a PDF file. Otherwise, it will not go as a zip file actually. Uh, uh, enable automatic sourcing, automatic generate all of the automatic fine group owners use custom English location group requisition lines. Uh, it's okay. I know everything is on. No. Ah, go on. You can it. And then here, what I'm going to go there. And the sourcing is okay. Fine, everything is there. <coughs> Purchasing documents. And then here, what happens? You go to the document types. And click on document types. You now go to the document types. And click on document types. They'll not have a way. Somebody has modified the document types, maybe. And click on it. So go to the document types. And then here, what happens? If you're going for a, what's called RFI. RFI is there. <coughs> Fine. Uh, blanket contract purchase. If you go there, click on it. You now go to the CPA. So it has to show me like. So we have a document style contract attempt like fine everything is there actually. So for this one, what happens? We have everything now. So I will not what happens? I put this as what P011. I will not put mine. So the P011 as a contract. Display name is P011. I'm making it now. Fine. So this is the one now. Fine. That's not so the CPA. What happens? That is not coming. The CPA is not coming. I'm not changing the name to P011 now. The document layouts, everything is there actually. No, that's not. Uh, on that contract purchase agreement, from the thing is there actually. Mm -hmm. So we have to have a layout because there's a mandatory one of fine purchase agreement layout and contract terms procurement and contract purchase agreement is all okay now. Drop it down. The contract purchase agreement. This is for what I'm change order template now. Fine. There's a change order template only. So document layout, if you go there, drop down purchase agreement layout, no fine purchase agreement layout, contract terms layout, fine that not contract terms layout. Uh, it is a contract terms layout. No, no, contract terms, contract terms document is not showing you fine. That's okay, that's not big. So, everything is okay. No, fine. I escape it. No, fine. And then I give a save and post because I'll change the display name of anyone's no, seven post. And then let me log out and log in and then see if I click on it. Click on the mountain. So, there may be some other place. Fine. Log out and log in because my style also is not sensed actually. My style is also there. So, sometimes what happens for the changes sense, what happens you go there and then sign in. And then run the LDAP also once. Now again, we'll not have a look at the manual. Now go to the tools. I'll not go to the tools because the setups has to be sensed to be the system actually. I will not go to the tools. Then click on the tools. Then go to the tools. And then I will not go to the scheduled process. And then see whether the LDAP is running or not. Thank you, it. So for the retrieval LDAP change is running actually. It's okay. I think probably it will be coming. Click on the home and then you know, go to the procurement and then have a look at the purchase order. Somebody. We'll now go there. Click on it. We'll now go to the procurement. Now. Go to the procurement. So I go to the procurement, and then here, what happens? I go to the purchase orders. No, fine. Go to the purchase. Purchase will not go to the purchase agreements. Fine. This is what I am going to on purchase. So orders and agreements will not take you to the same page only. Fine. There is no problem at all. Fine. And then I click on it, and then here, now what happens? Not the create order. I had to go to the create agreement. No, fine. This is a mistake I'm making it. No, fine. <laughs> I made a mistake on this. No, fine. That is the point. What happens? No, fine. I had to make a create agreement and not create order. Actually, that is the mistake. Fine. I understood the mistake. This is a mistake. No, fine. Click on the create agreement. I had to go to the create agreement. No, fine. Here it will come. So, we drop down here. What happens? You don't have the CPA contract purchase agreement is coming. So, yours is also coming. Your C on CPC, the one CPA, these are also coming. So, this is my mistake actually. This is my mistake. Whatever you created is also coming. So, go there. I will not, what happens? Go there. I will not, what about the contract purchase agreement? I am choosing it. So, you are wondering what is not coming up. That is my mistake. And P01, I have the agreement. I will not put the supplier over here. Click on it. The supplier side, everything will be coming. Now, we are now entering into a contract with the supplier. Who is our computer supplier? The P01 is a computer uh, supplier. Fine, click on create. They're not going to create it. <clears throat> and then, whenever you're making a contract, what happens? We'll not enable it for a fixed period of time. A <laughs> yeah, period we are going to enable. So, every contract, whether it's going to be a CPA or a BPA, fine, the start date, what happens, will be there. And then, normally in our company, we'll be using it for three months. Fine, end date also will be coming. So, we'll be giving it for three months actually. Go there, this is October, fine, go there. I will not say December. <laughs> so, October, normal December, fine, go there. Long away to the reverse. So it is customary practice to what happens to give a start and end date for every contract. Mm -hmm. I will not say in this three periods time, what happens? I am not going to give orders worth thousand US dollars. So that gets automatically defaulted to amount limit. And then the amount limit is a controlling factor on a CP actually, not the agreement amount. Right? Agreement amount is not a controlling factor, whereas the amount limit is a controlling factor. Agreement amount is for approvals. And then this is going to what happens to restrict your cumulative releases against the CP actually. Every CPA will be having a release, remember? So I'm not telling a lot, but you note it down, you will understand it later on. This is for approval purposes now, fine? 
for approval we had a, we had a, this is not fine this is for cumulative releases which are now going to be released against the cp act and then a minimum release amount the supplier says that another way you give 50 dollars worth of a spo what happens i will not supply and remember against the cpa he will supply nothing actually cpa is an agreement with a supplier and then we don't what happens give any item at all there will not be any item at all so we are given a three minutes and then we are given an agreement amount this is for approval and then this is for cumulative releases against the cp actor fine now 50 dollars and then go there click on it so i will not give a what i must this thing fine. the payment terms i drop down i will not make a change no fine click on it <clears throat> i will not what i must i will not make a change something no fine i will not say some end up on fine something to remember it now the shipping method you go there fine click on it i will not ask him to what happens the shipping ship via what happens the dhl fine i'll make dhl so go there. I will not say D H and then give it tab no fine. No, 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 D H L is there. So he has to supply everything via D H L. So freight terms one happens that you will not say <coughs> the seller pays fine. We will not be accepting the vendor pays fine. Click on search no. We will be accepting what happens. You go there. I will not say click on search no fine. The vendor has to pay the price. Otherwise, what happens? The vendor pays price and then he will know what happens. The jack up the prices if he is going to pay the freight actually. And go on. And the FOB is what we normally say up to destination. So whatever expenses are incurred in in between now, fine, like what happens, octra, toll tax, then the marble to the police officer, fine, everything will be gone with the supplier actually. So if you say up to destination, these are all everything he has to bear. <coughs> the balance, what happens once we arrive, it is ours naturally. So if a FOB is called free on board actually. In India, we call them as a freight on board, whereas universally it is known as a free on board. So if you say up to destination, up to our inventory office, inventory the gate, what happens, everything is his expense actually. So when you de delete with this thing, what happens? He will now automatically jack up the prices of every item he is now selling. And remember, the CPA will not have anything at all. We will not go to the notes and attachments. And then here, what happens? We are going to give a notes. No, fine, on. I'm not going to give a notes. <clears throat> so go there. So note to supplier. Fine, go there. <clears throat> I will not say what happens. Provide. <clears throat> fine. Warranty. Warranty and guarantee certificates. Guarantee certificates for every item. <clears throat> Whatever item he is going to supply against the CPA, what happens? He has to provide the warranty and guarantee certificates. Note to receiver. You will not say, please check. Please check the upright delivery. Ulta see the ayagot, okay, usko accept it. If it comes upside down, what happens? Don't accept it. And then we'll have an attachment. Okay? We'll not create an attachment. Thank you. We'll not go there and then create an attachment. So an attachment I'm going to create now. Okay? Click on it. We'll not create an attachment. So we are not going to have attachment. <clears throat> Hello. <clears throat> so here, what happens? I'm going to make an attachment. Yeah. So here, I will not say. Uh, I will not say. What happens? Pack all consignments in a wooden packing. Wooden packing. And then uh, put the tarpaulin <clears throat> sheet on the truck to prevent water seepage during transport. So likewise, what happens, you'll be having a lot of things. X, Y, Z. So you'll have a lot of uh, what happens, uh, your conditions. Are. So this is a generic condition for all the items which he is supplying. It. Remember, CPA will not have any item at all. I will not go there. I will not what happens, save it to the PC. I will not go there. So I will not save it into the PC. I will not go to the what, non I and then go there. And then here, what happens, go there. And then have a look at I will not open it up. And then I will now open up what in this place. What happens? I will now say make it as what is a CP attachment. CP attach the file name. So you will now give the generic instructions to supplier on this now. So close it now. I click on close. Then save now. CP attachment is now saved. Now what I do is I will now attach it on the CP. So give all the instructions to the supplier fine whatever he wants whenever you supply any goods what happens it has to be on a wooden packing you have to supply through some blue dot or whatever it is and then you have to put a tarpaulin sheet and then there will not be any rain rain seepage and then any generic instructions which whenever you are supplying against the cpn i will not attach i will not attach it no go there so from supply not a from supplier it will be two supplier actually it will be two supplier 
So I will not choose the file of actual comments. You can even make an attachment to anybody actually. Go there. So go there. I will not go there. So we'll have a CP attachment. CP attachment. I'll go there. Click on open open. I will not get attached. So the name itself will become, I will not say CP attach. The CP attachment. Click on open. Not done. So as and when you keep on doing it, what happens? Give us a name. Click on save. So it's not done. Remember, the CPA will not have any item at all. Not have any item. It will be having the notes and attachment is a very important one and the terms. The terms and then the notes and attachments are really important. Here, what happens at the end of month, I'm going to make a payment. It will be via DHL. He is now going to pay, right? And then FOB is destination. This is a very important one. And then along with it, the notes and attachments are also very important. So the notes and attachments, fine. The note to supplier is there, provide warranty certificate. Please check for the upright delivery and then we have an attachment. So the terms and notes and attachments are there. There will not be any item at all. You go to the controls and then go there. Click on the controls. In the controls, what happens? You go there and then what happens? You enable automatic sourcing. Fine, go there. And then punch out is for the only for the sourcing. Now, fine, go there. Automatically generate orders. So group requisitions, group requisition lines. Fine. This much is sufficient, actually. Fine. So these four tick marks you enable. So now the CPA is ready. So 5 to 2, 8 to 2 is ready. Click on that. Let me do. So we'll go there. Open up this what? We'll go there. I'm going to open up what? Or my notepad. Now open up a notepad. Now, anyone? It's 522 to 8 to 5 to 2 8 to. Well, now we'll not see who is going to upload. Click on the manager approach. We'll not see whether anybody has been set or not. If it is automatic, it will be easy now. Fine. Go there. 522 will be getting uploaded. It is automatic approval only. Fine. Go there. So we already seen about how to set up the automatic fine the previous class. Fine. There's automatic approval. Fine. Click on submit. 522 8 to will be getting approved. So we have all these things now. The three things. Fine. The note to supplier and then note to receiver and then the attachments are very important apart from the terms actually. The terms of the CPA is also very important. Now we'll now go there and then we will now create what a, C, a purchase requisition. Go there, click on it. Now go there, click on it. And then we'll now create a purchase requisition. So we'll now go there. We'll now wait for it to get approved now. It has to get approved. And then once when it gets approved, what happens? We'll be creating a purchase requisition. We we'll go there, go to the purchase agreement. We'll now go and then have a look at manage agreements and then put it now. I click on the manage agreements. And then we'll now put the item 522 522 8 to and then make a query now. So if the buyer is okay, fine. Otherwise, normally leave the buyer blank actually. You know what happens the pending approval. If you click on the hyperlink of it, it will not say who has to approve. It's not it coming up and click on it. You know, wait for some time. So since there is an automatic approval, it'll be going to open very smooth. It's an automatic approval. So click on the hyperlink. You know, getting generated now and not coming. Okay, in the meantime, what happens? Go there. I'm not going to create a purchase requisition. Fine, click on it. Go there. So click on it. I will not go to the procurement and then go to the purchase requisitions. Now. If this is not coming, click on the shop now. Fine. The shop is now because now whatever is the the purchase requisition, the purchasing itself is now coming as what a different one now. Fine. <clears throat> so uh, um, you will be having a responsive self service procurement. RSSP is going to come very soon. So they is going to be modified actually. Fine. So the new is going to come very soon now. Fine. So click on the purchase requisition, the old one actually. So once when the RSSP comes, what happens? The whole look and feel will be changing actually. I made to learn that. Fine. <laughs> so go to the purchase requisition for that. So go to the more task and then go to the update requisition preferences and then we got to update. So internal fine. Delivered location is Seattle actually. Oh, sorry. Fine. Seattle is a delivered location. Fine. So that will be defaulting fine. And then here it is going to be inventory. And then what happens? I go there. Stores is a sub inventory. So we have one ready made stores available there. Fine. Click on it. I'll not choose it. So click on save and close by which what happens there. We are now working on the US one business unit. And then PRC 21 is the requested actually. And say it and then go there. So click on save and close. In reality, they will all be different actually. So the purchase officer himself will not be getting a purchase requisition. The field, the people who are there in the mechanical department, electrical department, they will be getting it actually. So but is the training we are not using it. Now. And then go to the more task and then go to the enter requisition lines. Right. And enter requisition lines. So go to the requisition lines and then go there. <clears throat> And then the manager, in the meantime, what happens? You go there and then make a search. Now, I click on it, it has to come as what? Open now. I click on search. It has to come as open. Fine. Once it is approved, yeah, it's open. So now, 522, what happens? It has got a what happens? The attachment. And then it has got a notes also. Right? If you click on the attachment, you can now see the attachment. Now, I click on it. The attachment will now say you. So this is the CP attachment is there. I click on it. And then click on the notes. It will now show you the notes. Now, I click on notes. You have got what happens? Provide warranty. And then please check the upright delivery. So there are two attachments. Two notes are there. And then one attachment actually. I click on that. So go there. So click on it and then go to the shop now. I will not put my item over here. Okay? The P01 is the one. Click on the P01. The item will be coming. Now refer to this agreement. Okay? Click on it. Agreement we had referred to. Okay? So go there. So here what happens? The agreement type has to come now. If the agreement type is not coming, then what happens? If you put 522, fine, it will accept. It is by default it is a CP actually. So next class, I will not tell you about how to what happens. I put the agreement type over here. So by default, it is a CP actually. 
So why do you do the one? Fine, go there. It'll be coming. Fine, go there. So go there. So now what happens? You know, go there. Click on it. So go there. Is the type is inventory source organization? What happens? It's not coming as a source actually. It is not an inventory. You have to make it as a supplier actually. So once you put an item and change it to supplier, and then if it is a supplier, what happens? The five two two eight two has to come now. Five two two eight two is the one. Fine, go there. Not. It's not coming. Fine, go there. So now, what happens? By default, it is a CPA. And then, how to make a change to BPA? I will not explain it tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will be explaining it to you. What happens? How to make it as a BPA? Right? The agreement type has to be changed to BPA. So we had to customize the page and then bring it to BPA. Now. So by default, the CPA is not coming ever. You know. So this item is now referencing this now. Fine, now referencing this. I will not go now. Agreement says what? The minimum agreement amount is now fifty dollars. Is now ten dollars. Fine, go there. I will not go for two dollars. Two dollars means what? It will not give a problem. The supplier will not accept it. Problem. He will know he needs at least what fifty dollars worth of a purchase order actually referencing this agreement actually referencing this agreement. So make it as a supplier. You can put the agreement and then even the agreement is coming. Fine, go that to one. Everything is coming. Go that one. Everything is coming. Go that to one. I will now add to cart. So this will now give a problem in the purchase order. Fine, click on add to cart. So it is now referencing this agreement five to eight two. So it has got a fifty dollar minimum release amount. Fine, click on. And then before which what happens? I will now add something over now. Fine, click on it. I will not add to cart. Fine. I will not delete it, and then I will not add. Yeah, what happens? Is, say yeah, the the what happens? Is, the requester also will have some comments actually. So let me delete it, and then again come over here, and then create another requisition. Uh, the requester also will be having comment. Now somebody has now given all this thing. Now click on it. Uh, some extra DFO has been provided by somebody now. Then go there. Click on OK. Now click on it. Now it is getting added. Now fine. I will not delete the cart. I will not go there. So click on delete the cart. Delete the cart. And I will again go and then shop it. The cart is deleted because he has to add his requirement. Actually, the requester will be adding his requirement. So we have what happens? Uh, two notes and then one attachment of the CPA. The requester also will have some notes and attachments on this. So click on it. The requester also will be having some notes and attachments. Okay. Now I'm not deleting it. I will now go to the cart again and then do it now. Go there. So no, no, no. So click on home icon, and then I will now go to again to purchase requisition. Now fine, let me create a requisition again. So go there. So go to the more task and then enter the requisition lines here. What happens? You'll be adding it. Now I click on it. I will now say P01. I will now choose my item. Now I click on it. Item is now chosen. And then change the thing to supplier actually. Since the item has been enabled for internal or requisition also, now both the things will be coming. Fine. Go there. Click on it. And then go there. So since it's not fully set, it's not throwing an error. Fine. Go there. Make it as a supplier. So once we make it as a supplier, agreement is what? 522 is the one. You write it off of it. It will be coming. Now I click on it. Not choosing enough. Click on it. Everything is coming. Fine. Go there. Click on it. I will now go for two more days. Now fine. Now, the requester, while creating the requisition, he is the demand creator, actually. He is the ultimate authority in the, in the procure to pay life He will not say, what happens? I will not say, uh, uh, PR, fine. I will not say, no to supplier. So, since to understand it easily, what happens? I am not putting a PR note, no, fine, PR, supplier. SUPP, supplier. It's a note to supplier, fine, no way. And then he is not going to make an attachment, no, fine, on it. He will not make one uh, PR attachment, no, fine, click on it. I will not go there. Click on it. I will not make one PR attachment. Click on it. I have not touched something. Then go there. I will not make it as a PR attachment. Actually, I will not go to the PC. I will not go there. Click on it. So he will also have his own one. When I was working for a Tawasul Telecom, they have got a very big attachment on every item. Actually, it's a very huge one. And then you may have to attach it accordingly. Click on it. I will not go there. I will not say it's a PR attachment. So they normally specify the specs of the item. Actually, item specs is normally attached. Click on seven things. So go there. It is not done. Fine. Go there. I will not attach it over here. Fine. Click on attachments. So the, the choose a file. It is not internal. It is not two supplier actually. Two supplier. And then click on choose a file. Go there. And then I will not go there. I will not make it. What is the PR attachment? Fine. Click on it. You are not making attachment. And then I will not give a description also. Fine. This is what PR attachment. PR attachment. So go there. Click on OK. Now. <clears throat> so this is not. This is okay. So requester is now giving some notes as well as he is attaching it. So we have two things in the requesting, and then we have three things on the CP actually. Right, the reference again. Click on add to cart. So I go to add to cart. So click on add to cart. And then here again, what happens? I will now say test one, and then I will now say test two. Some uh, descriptive flux space has been able to click on it. You are doing those things. So go there. So click on it, and then click on it, and then I will now go to the main page. I click on the review, and then we will now see the approvals. I click on it, I will now go to the manager approvals. Mm -hmm. So here, what happens? We have a file to do. This is the CP actually. This is the CPA. I will not put the PR number over here. Fine. PR number. I want to put it. The 204146. No, fine. The 204146 is the number. Now. And then click on what? I will not. What happens? You have to go to the manage approach and see who is going to approve. So click on save also. Fine. Click on save. 
So go there. So we can see what happens with the attachments. So the note to supplier as well as the PR attachment is also there. And then referring the contract also at the bottom. So click on the manager approvals. We'll not see whether anybody has to approve it or not. Otherwise, you have to bypass it actually. If it is not automatic, we have to make it as a bypass. We have to bypass it. P0101 is the one. So it will be coming. And remember, the supplier expects minimum $50 worth of uh, purchase order actually. Referencing the CP actually. That is what you are saying. So minimum release is what? $50. So now, once when you convert this PR into PO, at the time, what happens? It will be throwing an error that what happens? The supplier will not agree at all. So nothing is set actually. Fine, that's why it's coming like this. No, I give my back now. We'll not set up something. Right? right click on that. What happens? They go there. I will not duplicate it. And then we will not set up the requisition approvals. Requisition approval is not set at all. Fine, we'll not go there. We'll not, we'll not go to the manage requisition approvals and then set up. Though. Right click on it. We'll not go there. We'll not go to what? Set up and maintenance. And then we'll not go there and then have a look at it. Now. Set up and maintenance. You click on it, and then here, what happens? You go there, go to the search, and click on it. Manage requisition approach. Manage percentage, man. Rec percentage, man. APP percentage. So go to the manage requisition approach, and go that's not manage requisition approach. So requisition has got two things, and then CP has got three things. Everything will be communicated to you. Nothing is enabled. I will not say, I will not disable it. Now, click on it, disable it. I will not choose the third one. I will not enable it. Now, click on it, enable it. So that other one is disabled. Now, third is enabled. Click on the eight rows, and then I will not get the automatic approach. Click on plus one. Click on get automatic. You already seen about how to do it now. Fine. So many things has been demonstrated now. Fine. Automatic. Go the take over it. It's automatic now. Fine. Go the rule always applies. Fine. What is no condition is there. Fine. Click on it. And then go to the actions. And then we'll make it as automatic. So make it as automatic. Go there. So what happens? It is approval. Approved. And then click on okay. Now fine. It will be getting automatically approved. So application developer will be the person who will be approving it now. Fine. Go there. Come on. So click on save and then deploy. So once when it is deployed, sometimes what happens? You may have to log out and log in also. I know you make such a change, but you have to log on and log in. You're doing it now. <clears throat> so go there. Click on OK now. Fine. So go there. You'll not go to the place. Fine. Click on the shop. I'll not click on save. And then again, what happens? There? Click on the manage approach. You'll not see whether it's coming. Otherwise, what happens? You have to log on and log in to see the changes which you have made on the approvals actually. So application developer has to approve. We'll not see whether it is sensing or not. If it is sensing, 201146 will be getting approved. 201, 204.146 will be getting approved. Wait for it. For the system to generate the approvals, actually. So the approval is basically a list building mechanism. It will not build the list of approvers who are going to approve. It will not build the list of approvers who are going to approve. Fine, click on it. <clears throat> so go there. So application developer is coming. Fine, click on submit. So we are now set up as automatic. Fine, will be approved. And then this will be landing up on the process requisition area. Fine, 204146 will be landing up on approval. You know that. So if you go there and then if you click on the pending approval, so once it is approved, it will be landing up on the process requisition area. Fine, click on the home icon. And go there, click on the home icon. So it is referencing the CP actually. Remember, fine, go there. I will not go to the purchase orders. Fine, go there, purchase orders. I will not go to the process requisition area and then query the requisition. Fine, click on it. And then go to the, the top, we have a process requisition. Fine, click on the top. So here it will be coming automatically you know, as soon as it is approved. There is no need to query at all. It will be coming automatically. So whether it's not coming, so I will not remove the buyer and then make a query. I will not make it the procurement business unit. Go there. I will not make it the US business business unit. Go there. Come on. So I will not put the requisition number also here. Thank you. Come on. I will not go there. I will not have a look at the requisition number. The requisition number is what? 204146. No, fine. Not right. So 204146. It will also come automatically. No need to forcibly query. No, fine. Click on search. It will be coming. So as I meant, the requisition gets approved. It will be landing up on the process requisition area and then it will be ready for processing actually. So go to the manage requisitions and get whatever they go there. Click on it. It's already submitted for approval, actually. Go to the process requisition and wait for it. Click on submission. Here we go. Hey, come, come, come. Two zero four one four six is coming. So requisition approvals are not taking more time now. Fine. So once it is approved, it will be coming. We'll not go there and then have a look at it. We'll not go there. <clears throat> and then this is one now. Fine. Click on it. So process requisition such. We'll not go there and then have a look at the requisition itself. Fine. Click on it. Go to the procurement and then go to the purchase requisition. We'll not see whether it is approved. Or not. So is the pending approval fine? Click on it. It is now still not approved. So click on this, and then there also what happens? I'll be showing you. Yeah. So click on it. Fine. It's pending approval. Oh God, it's not taking a longer time. The approval is not there. There you are. Come, come, come. Mm. Not enough. So we already given an automatic only. Fine. Go there. So it now shows you the attachment. Fine. This is a, if you click on the attachment, it will not show you what is the attachment. Fine. We have a PR attachment. And, we have, and then we have a notes also because the requester is now giving a notes. So both the things will be put on the CSP one. Right? When the SPO is now getting created, what happens? Both the things will become okay, on now. It doesn't get approved. Mostly pending approval. Ah, ah, it is not taking a longer time. Hey, come, come, come. It has to get approved. 
So once it is approved, what happens? We can start to process this actually. So let me stop the recording for some time now. Now it has got approved. The requisition has got approved. Fine. I will now go to the placement. I will now right click on the duplicate of it. Now it has taken a longer time for getting approved. I will now go to the procurement. I will go to the purchase orders. Now click on the purchase orders. And then I will now go to the what top. I will now click on it. And then I go to the process requisition. Automatically it will now appear on the process requisition area. And no need to even search for it. And you know, coming automatically. Now, what happens if you click on the yellow icon, the yellow icon, and click on it, it means what? The requisition line was not processed into a purchase order because the price is not negotiated. The CPA does not have any price at all because it doesn't have any item also. So that is why this error is coming. Right? In the BPA, this error will not come. On a contract purchase agreement, we don't even have a line. And so what happens? There is no throwing this error. We can ignore it. Chalega, you can say. Click on OK. Doesn't matter. So select the line from the left hand side and then add to document builder. So we don't have any this thing at all. Click on add to document builder. So we are adding to the document builder. So it is now getting added to the document builder. So the system gets added to the document builder. And then whatever the source agreement is coming as file to loop. Click on OK. So by doing it, whatever it is now going it has two attachments. One is the attachment and one is the notes actually. And click on it. So with it, what happens? You come the the bottom. What happens? You go there and then have a look at it. Now. Click on it. You don't have a look at it. So let me go on that. Minimize this number. Minimize this. So click on create. We're not going to get a purchase order again. No, right? Click on it. It's only one dollar. So, but the supplier is not going to agree because the total amount is only twenty dollars. So the total amount is only twenty dollars. So because of which, what about the supplier will not agree at all. So it will now raise a what about the problem on the approval action. If you try to validate the PO, it will now say the minimum release amount must be fifty dollars. So because of which, what about is not happening? So, so click on it. And we're getting it. So the document is created. We'll now go to the actions and then what about the validate it. While validating it, it will now say very clearly that what happens along with the taxes, it's only 21.90, but he wants an order for $50 actually. So the minimum release amount against the PO, against the CPA, must be for $50. That's why he's saying the total amount released against the source agreement is in this order is less than the required minimum release. Because supply is saying if you give an order less than 50, I cannot supply because then the carrying cost will be more than the item cost. That's what he's saying. So now, even though the requester wanted only two quantities, what happens? The purchase officer will be forced to increase the quantity. Now go there. You know, change it what as a five more is because he needs a minimum of the fine you know changing it so but the requester do not want this now but he has to convince the requester that what happens the supplier is not agreeing it before because of which what happens you change it so if you change it in the lines if you go to the schedules it will not get automatically reflected the change will be getting automatically reflected fine is also fine now fine on it and then the distributions also will be getting automatically reflected so everywhere it's okay now fine click on save and then what happens it will again validate it click on it go to validate okay, good action then go validate so once we validate what happens it will be coming properly so click on validate. Now what happens? It will all be coming very proper. So it will have no errors at all. Thank you. And then you will now go to the what manage approvals and see whether anybody has to approve or not. We have only seen that it has been automatically. So there will not be a problem. So go there. So go there. Click, click on submit. Now, fine. So purchase order number is what? US 164962. Now, fine. Go there. So US. What happens? Go there. So what? US 164.962. What is it? 962. What is the number here? So one six four nine six two. One six four nine six two. Nine six two. And then go there. Fine, click on it. And I will now submit for approval. Fine, click on submit for approval. So once when you submit for approval, it will be getting approved. And then the PO, we can see all the attachments. So three attachments, three attachments and notes on the CPA as well as the requesters too. Fine. All the five you can very well see on the purchase order. No doubt. Go there. Come on. I'll now go on and query it now. Fine, click on it. It has been submitted for approval. Fine, click on it. Go there. I will now go to the what? manage orders now. Fine. I go to the manage orders and then query it. So click on it. I will go there. The US fine one six four. Go there. I will not make it what one six four nine six two. Nine six two is the one. Nine six two is the one. Go there. Come on. And then go there. Click on it. So I will now remove the buyer and then make a search. Now click on search. I'll go there. It's pending approval. You can now see there are attachments. Now click on it. So if you click on this plus, now find notes exist. Now find click on the notes. You can see. So totally five things has to be seen. Now, right? now we are seeing the two notes. Fine on the CPA. CPS two notes are coming. Fine, click on them. And then I will now click on that. What happens? Hyperlink on this. No, fine, click on the hyperlink of it. Fine, click on hyperlink on the purchase order. So once when you click on the hyperlink of it, what happens? It will only it will not go for edit mode. Remember, it will only display it actually. So the CPS notes are available here. If you click on the hyperlink, what happens? You will now see the PR attachment. If you click on it, what happens? You go there. Click on it. You will now see the PR attachment as well as CPA attachment. Fine, so go there. So text in the file. Right? The PR attachment, CP attachment and PR is coming. Fine, go there. So play, uh, pro, provide your job. Okay, it's okay. There's a problem. So the PR attachment and CP attachments are available on the line here. Fine, go there. So we have seen outside the
the two CPA notes actually, and then you click on the notes something, there will be a PR notes something. Okay? To be showing the PR notes, the PR note. So we have a PR note, and then both the CPA and P, CPA, uh, P, C, P, the CPA and PR attachments, and then outside we are having the uh, what the CPA attachments. CPA attachment is not shown outside. So all the five are available on the purchase order. So it is now getting approved now. So for two hundred one. And then remember, on the CPA we have a maximum limit now. Fine, we are now set up the maximum limit. Fine, so we are now going to create a one. Fine, go there. It will now give another error now. Fine, click on it. I will now go there. I will now go to the shop. No, fine. I will now create another requisition for more than thousand. Fine. All the things put together cannot exceed. If you go to this place, fine, go to the purchase order. Fine, go there. So click on what I have done and then come out of it. Fine, go there. Come out of it. And then if you go on then query my CPA now. Fine, click on it. Done. Let me go on then query my CPA. Fine, click on it. If you go on then query my CPA. I will now go to the manage agreements and then let me query my CPA now. Fine. Five two two eight two. Fine, go there. 522, 522, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8, you go there, you will not get one more requisition. Fine, click on it. No, enter requisition. Fine, go there. So, all the CP is referencing. Fine, go there. You will not put the item over enough. Fine, P01. You will not go and then put the item. Fine, click on it. And then make it as a supplier. Now, fine, click on it. Now, make it as a supplier. Make it as a supplier. And then go there. So, go there. agreement is what? Five. You have to reference it. Now, fine, five to eight. So, it is customary for every company to what happens to reference the CPA if something is existing. I will not go there. I will not go for what? 100 conditions. Now, 100 is totally 1000 actually. So already 50 is released, and so what happens? It will be giving error. Error. No, fine. Go there. Hundred coins is there. Fine. Click on that. Add to cart. You are not adding it. And then I will say test four, and then test five, or the additional information or the description actually. And then click on add cart, and then go there. I will not review it, and then submit it. So click on review, and then submit the requisition. So it is already referencing enough. In the bottom, what happens? You cannot see the referencing. I am not putting the attachments on all. Fine. Go there. And then click on what happens? I will not submit for approval. So two zero four one four seven is now submitted for approval. 204147 is now submitted for probably. Go that to one. I'm going to say it's what? PR. 204147 is the one. Fine. 147 is the one. So once it is approved, it will be available again. Fine, click on it. So we will go there. 204. <clears throat> fine. 147 is the one. And then remove the buyer and then make a courier. If no submit for approval. So we had to what happens, wait for it to come. Fine, click on it. So once when you convert this PR into PO, referencing the CPA, then what happens? At the time, it will not give a problem. The shop requisition, fine. No pending approval, fine. We will not wait for it to get approved. So go there. Pending approval. So first one has got uh, taken a long time. Second one will not take that much of a time, actually. First one has taken a longer time, but the second one will not take that much of a time now, actually. <coughs> so pending approval. So to wait for it. So once, so once when you convert in the PO, it will not say the higher limit will not come into picture, actually. So we have one lower limit given by this number. No, giving done. Fine. Click on back. No, fine. It not take some. So go there. Click on done. And then it will not get soon approved. So the higher limit will not come into picture. And then it will not say no. Fine. Because, click on no. <coughs> so pending approval. Fine. Go there. Come it will not get approved, actually. Is approved now. Final approved. Now all happens, you go there, go to the manage agreements, and then on the process requisition here, if you go on and query for it, it will be coming. Coming, coming, coming. Go there. I will now put my US1 business in it, 204147. Fine click on search now. It is now approved. So it has to come now. Fine click on. Come, come, come. 247. Why is not coming? And select it. And then here, what happens? You go to the add to document builder. So this time, when I convert it into PO, what happens? You go there. Fine. It's now referencing the 52. Fine click on. Okay now. Fine. The higher limit will not cause a problem for this. The higher limit will be causing a problem. I will now click on create. And then when you validate it, what happens? All the referenced SPOs against the CPA cannot exceed thousand dollars. All the referenced SPOs against the CPA cannot exceed the dollar dollars. So it will be showing this error actually. So go there, click on it. And then you go to actions and then go to validate. Mm -hmm. So this is for what? Along with the taxes, but taxes is not considered against the release amount. Fine, only the ordered amount. Fine, fifty dollars plus thousand dollars is exceeding thousand actually. So we have a what happens? The amount limit in the CPA. Fine, don't have, fine click on actions and go to validate. It will not show you this. The validate what happens? Go there. Not there. So your order will now cause the total amount released against the agreement to exceed the amount limit and not the amount agreed now. So in such cases, what happens is the error actually. So in such cases, what they will do is they will now go to what the agreements, 
and then they will know what happens if they go there. I don't know, edit, no fine. Select it, and then we go to edit, no fine. Go to actions, and then go to for edit. So once when edit it, what happens? It will be creating a change order, no fine. Go there. So click on it. And then they will not write the exact reason for the editing, no fine. Go there. I don't know, say enhancement. Enhancement of what? Amount agreed. Agreed. So here, what happens? Amount agreed is a picture. Even though we are given the amount, agreed amount, that gets copied over here. Here, what happens? You're going to make a change. Now, 1,500, the amount agreed. 1,500, whatever is 1,500. And then click on submit. So once it is submitted, and then it will be approved. The change order one is not getting approved. Remember, the reason for the change order is very, very important. Fine, click on search. Now, fine, now say, what happens? An IA account will be coming. So we have to wait for it. So once the IA account vanishes, what happens? The new limit will be coming. Agreement amount. Fine. Amount agreed is only for approval purposes. And then this is for the cumulative releases, actually. So click on it. The cumulative releases will become fine. So click on search. Fine, click on search. And then here, what happens? You go to the purchase order. Fine, click on it. And then go there. In the purchase order, what happens? You go there. And then click on save now. Fine, click on save. <clears throat> so what happens? 164963 is coming. If you go to the manage agreements, and then here, what happens? If you go there, and then click on search again now. Fine, click on search again. So it has to show me what release amount is what? 1050 actually. And then this has to become 1500. So once when the IE icon goes away, what happens? It will now become 1500. And then you can very well approve it. Now, fine, we are waiting for the change order to approve. Fine. We are not given any approvals for the change order. In reality, what happens? We'll be having an approval also. So once when the approver approves, because it's all automatic only. So no approval for the change order. And so what happens? This amount will become 1500. And then what happens? This will now the purchase order can be very well. If you go there, it'll now if you go to the actions and then have a look at it, fine, go to the actions and then it. So you won't find the error at all. The error will not be coming at all. Fine. See, no errors are coming. That means what? It is now accepting it now. Fine. Click on submit now. It is accepted. So there is no error at all because this is already approved now. Fine. This, this place, what happens? You go to the manage agreements, fine. Go there, search for it, fine. Click on it. The IA account would have gone now. The IA account will go away. This will not become 1500 actually. Mm -hmm. So it will not become the IA account is gone now. Fine. Uh, agreed amount. Fine. Go there. It's not showing you still 1000 only. No problem. Yeah. Agreement amount has to be whatever. The, if you click on the hyperlink of it and then have a look at it inside now. Fine. Click on it. So we already made it as so 1500. So amount limit is now 1500. Now, oh, agreement amount is not showing. It is not showing you the amount, amount, agreement, amount limit now. So the amount limit is the ultimate authority. Fine for this now. Fine, click on the <coughs> no coming. Fine. So here, what happens? I will now go there, go to the purchase order and uh, submit it. Fine, no, submit for approval. So once when you submit for approval, the total released amount against the CPA will now become 1050. And then since that is okay, fine, it will become. Fine, click on it. So click on search. It is now submitted for approval. So it has to become 1050 actually. <coughs> And then if you make a search now, fine, click on search, it will not show both the documents over there now. Fine, click on it. And if you click on the hyperlink on this, it will not show both the documents. So we are waiting for the purchase order to get approved now. Fine, click on it. It will not go there. So it will not go to the manage orders and then have a look at it. Oh, two minutes now, fine, it will not complete. Huh? Okay. You okay. go to the manage orders. And then go there. And then click on search now. Fine, click on it. So uh, it's okay. Buyer is okay. Fine, click on search now. You click on search. There's only the only buyer. Fine, not. So it's now pending approval. So once when it is approved, you can now see this. Uh, Changes coming on this topic. Click on it. Pending approval. Fine, over. So it's now still pending approval. So it is almost coming. Now, fine, click on close. Now, fine, over. and then go there. And then if you click on search now, it will be open. Mm -hmm. it will not so wait for it to open. Now, fine. So once it is open, if you go to the manage agreements, this amount will be showing as 1050 now. Fine. This released amount will be showing as 1050. Once it is approved, what happens? It will be showing as 1050. And then if you click on the hyperlink, it will not show both the uh, what happens? The SPOs referencing the CP actually. Two more minutes. Fine. I'll not complete it. So click on search. We are waiting for the approval to come. Fine. Right. Now see, you can now show in 1050 now. So till against this, what happens? You know, saying fine. <clears throat> so amount limit has to be uh, informed. Now fine. Agreement amount is only for whatever the approval purposes. Whereas amount limit is the ultimate controlling authority. All cumulative releases against the CPA should not exceed the amount limit. Actually, not agreement amount. So click on the hyperlink of it. It will now show both the POs which are referencing the CPA. Actually, 5282 is now reference. You can also show both the things. So this completes what PR CPA SPO. Is it clear? Can somebody say yes to me? <laughs> it's very tough now, fine, because the only thing is what happens, you have to very closely follow. Yeah, sir. Very good. Thing. Fine. You yeah, understood it now. That's great action. So there are two limits on this now, fine. One is what the lower limit given by the supplier, the higher limit given by the management action. All cumulative releases against the CPA cannot exceed the amount limit of a CPA action. That is what it is. The amount limit of a CPA cannot exceed. Okay, fine. Can you open up your video and then say yes to me? Yes, sir. Great. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yes, sir.
Okay. So tomorrow we are going to continue on uh, what I was uh, your BPA blanket purchase agreement. Fine. We are now completing the CPA now. Okay, sir. Okay. We are now completing the blanket purchase agreement. Bye for now. Okay. Bye.